In our previous video, I left you off with the question of how we sort of figure out how fast reactions go. We established what chemical reactions were, and then we looked at the types, and then we looked at their sort of, let's say, release of energy or need for energy, depending on whether or not they're exergonic or endergonic, and that led to spontaneity and favorability or non-favorability, etc. Now it's time to really look at a very important biological perspective of metabolism, which is the idea of looking at the rate of reactions. And the rate of reactions is heavily influenced by the presence of what are known as enzymes. And we're going to entitle this first flowchart Enzymes 1. There are going to be three enzymes flowcharts. This will be the first one. Enzymes 1. The first thing that we need to understand about enzymes, before we even get to their structure or whatever they do, we have to understand some more thermodynamics, but I promise you we'll get to the biological side in just a second. We have to understand the idea first of an activation energy barrier. Every reaction, every chemical reaction, has what is known as an activation energy barrier. So let's write that down. Every chemical reaction, we'll be a little bit more specific, between molecules involves bond breaking and forming. So whenever we do a chemical reaction, we're going to break bonds and we're going to form bonds. We're going to break bonds and form bonds. What we have to understand is that activation energy which we'll label out right over here, activation energy from this point forward will be big E, which is energy of course, and then little a, subscript A. E A, activation energy, is this idea that there is an initial energy needed to start chemical reaction. This is the idea, or sort of similar to the idea of the theme, that you need a spark to start a fire. You need an, an activation energy to start a chemical reaction. You need to reach, let's say for better phrasing would be, you need to reach an activation energy to start a chemical reaction. But what we have to understand is that this activation energy, in order to reach it, we can do certain things. We can manipulate reactions in certain ways to reach that activation energy faster by, let's say, maybe lowering it, maybe making it less of a steep hill to climb in order to get to that point so that we can continue the reaction altogether. So we have some work to do, and then once we reach that a certain point, we're able to do the entire reaction no matter what. It's like a, you have to get to a certain point and then complete that reaction. So, activation energy is going to, uh, let's say, often be supplied, usually, sometimes we see it often supplied as thermal energy, and this makes sense, you'll see in just a second, um, that reactants absorb from envi environment, that reactants absorb uh, from ENV, environment. So this is the idea that you're going to warm things up in order for them to get started, in order for a reaction to get started. And we see this in the lab all the time. Whenever you do lab work, what you're going to see is that many reactions, like let's say a PCR reaction, which is a polymerase chain reaction, is the synthetic lab way of making lots of DNA, of doing DNA synthesis um, from a, let's say, man-made perspective. What we do during PCR, which you'll learn actually in DNA technology later on in this semester, is that you reach, you really, really raise the temperature so that all of the reactions can occur at a better rate. And this is the same idea. You make sure you, let's say you have a reaction, you put it in the microwave, let's say, to make it go a little bit better. That's a very non-technical way of thinking of it, but it's a good idea because all we're saying is we're supplying thermal energy, that's just heat, that reactants will absorb, absorb from the environment in order to reach what? Activation energy. Let's not forget our overall concept. Uh, another thing is, some people often forget this, is that even exergonic reactions um, have an activation energy. They have an activation energy. 
It's just that their activation energy, as compared to, the, let's say, their opposite endergonic reactions, is oftentimes a lot lower, a lot easier to get to, and thus the reaction itself is a lot easier to complete. So what the heck do enzymes do? What are they involved in? They are involved in this concept of activation energy. They're going to help out reactions by reaching and helping reach this activation energy by usually lowering the activation energy at which a normal chemical reaction takes place. So what we state about enzymes is that enzymes are considered, and remember this is all about metabolism, metabolism is the sum of all chemical reactions and energy transformations taking place in a system. Enzymes are a part of every single biological system. So enzymes are biological catalysts, we say. And what do you know about a catalyst? What is a catalyst? A catalyst is something that starts something, something that is a spark, something that's going to cause an onset of reactions. And what we say about enzymes specifically is that, and this is something you should definitely know, is that they, once put within a reaction, they actually speed up the rate of chemical reactions. That's their main purpose. And they actually do this without getting, and uh, this is kind of an awkward terminology, used up. So I'm going to put it in quotes. What I mean by this is that if you put an enzyme in a reaction, it'll cause it to go much faster, and then at the end of that reaction, the enzyme will still be there. It'll still be okay. It'll just make sure that it does its job and stays there if it needs to do its job again. It doesn't just fly away or go away into heat, let's say. It stays there. It stays there and is still a part of that system. So this is obviously, I think, the most important thing you need to know. You need to know that enzymes speed up the rate of chemical reactions, and you can even write down, if you have room here, by lowering activation energy. By lowering activation energy. And um, actually, that is my next point. I forgot. That's the next point. Uh, they lower activation energy. So it's worth writing as another boxed-in thing. You have to know that enzymes speed up the rate of chemical reactions. How do they do it? By lowering activation energy. What they do is they bring reacting substances together faster. Bring reacting substances together faster. That basically means they speed things along. If they see two molecules that should be next to each other and interacting and doing something chemically, they say, all right, get together really quickly. And this is all about reaching that point at which um, we're going to have the reaction, reaching that barrier. Every chemical reaction between molecules involves bond breaking and forming. In order for this barrier to be reached, we're going to lower the activation energy so that barrier is reached faster, it's reached more efficiently, Enzymes are the biological catalysts that can do that. In addition, um, as just sort of a sort of a caveat of this is that we have to remember that enzymes can't actually do this. They can't actually cause a reaction to happen just because it's used, just because they're there, just because um, let's say they're there. Um, or actually, that's kind of an awkward terminology. Let's say just because it's used. So, enzymes, what I mean by this is simply that a reaction is not going to happen, um, let's say, if an enzyme just shows up. That reaction has to occur by whatever means it normally occurs. The only thing an enzyme will do is speed it up once it starts and it will speed it up by lowering the activation energy. An enzyme itself, if you put it into a reaction, if you put it into an empty beaker with molecules, will not cause the reaction to happen. The reaction has to happen however it will normally, chemically, biologically happen. The enzyme, what it does is make sure that that reaction happens faster because it lowers the activation energy. What you have to remember by this, the technical way of saying this is that the free energy, what did we label free energy again? Delta G, is actually unaffected by catalysts. It's unaffected by catalysts. There's a very famous chart, a very famous graph 
that helps explain this idea in much greater detail, I highly suggest you look at your textbooks um, at the me metabolism section, of course, and find that chart, find that graph that explains that they speed up and lower the activation energy without changing that overall delta G, okay? So all we're going to say at the end of this sort of comment is that catalysts or enzymes only make reaction um, increase its rate. That's an increase error. That's all. They don't cause a reaction to happen. What they do is they make sure that the reaction happens at an even faster rate. And lastly, the very last thing we'll say for this uh, flowchart is um, uh, the names of enzymes, you might have known, known this, but it's good to know uh, if you have never seen this before. The names of enzymes, most people know, um, usually end in what? Usually end in the suffix ace. And that line just represents a different word. So lactase is the enzyme that breaks down lactose. And if you are lactose intolerant, you do not have the lactose taste enzyme. And that's just a general way that we name enzymes. That's a naming convention. So this is enzymes as an introduction. Overall, hopefully you understand from this that enzymes uh, are all about looking at this activation energy barrier. What they do is they make sure that that activation energy barrier is a little bit easier to reach by lowering it and then thus speeding up the chemical reaction. Let's remember that an enzyme will not ever cause a reaction to happen. The enzyme, what it'll do is, it'll speed up the reaction if the circumstances are there for the reaction to happen in the first place. And enzymes usually end in the phrase ACE. In the next video, we'll continue discussing enzymes and we'll look a little bit more detail on how they actually work. Now that we understand what makes up an enzyme, an enzymatic characteristic, enzymatic quality, in our next couple of videos, the last two videos of this series, we'll look at their actual working, their actual function.